Hi everyone. Um, we are doing a mini album today. Uh, this paper that you see here, I recently placed two orders with Scrapbook and um, they're very good about like um, padding the stuff that they send you. And so with my two orders, I ended up with a massive amount of this brown paper here. I mean, I have stacks and stacks and stacks of it. Huge. I have a stack that's like yay tall. I have a picture I'll put in somewhere here. Um, but anyway, so I have all this paper and I couldn't throw I couldn't bring myself to throw it away because it's it's heavier paper. I mean, come on, who doesn't need more paper? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an album out of it. And um the mini album itself is going to be for a project that I have going on at my house starting as soon as the weather decides that it wants to stop snowing in April. Um, I have a, a garage attached to my house. It's a two car garage. You can put two cars in a, you know, bumper to bumper. And then out back of my house, I have a, another smaller garage for my lawn tractor. And attached to that smaller garage is a shed. Like it used to be a work space for a woodworker. We use it to store all of our pool accessories and like to change it and stuff like that. Cause the, the our, we have a giant deck that comes out of the pool house well, the, the shed and leads to a smaller deck that subsequently leads to the pool. So what we're doing is we're converting the shed from a storage unit to a guest house, like a pool house. However, we're doing it with all recycled materials. My garage that's attached to my house is floor to ceiling, front to back, full of furniture and random crap that is still good that we don't want to get rid of, but we have no use for. So we're going to use all that to make furniture and decorations and stuff for the outbuilding, for the, the pool house. And um, so I'm going to make this mini album to store pictures and receipts and little ideas and stuff like that that are for the pool house. And then when I'm done, it can sit on a shelf in the pool house so people that visit can look at it and see the process. So we're making it out of all recycled material. And when I say all, I mean all. This kind of stuff, scraps from other projects, that sort of thing. I want to make make it so I'm not using anything new other than the glue because obviously you can't recycle glue. So what we're going to need for this is, I wrote a list even on scrap paper. Look at that. So you're going to need your scrap paper of any sort, packaging, um, even you know, paper that you have laying around from other projects, scrap paper, whatever. You're going to need a cutting tool. So far, the only cutting tool I've used for this project is my X-Acto knife. Um, glue. I have the glue that I'm using is in this container here. And I just have it in a little tray from, I think, Mallow Cups. I use this part of the tray for um, a textured background. And then when I'm not using it as a stamp, I use it as a little tray to catch glue. What I'm using, I have it in a face wash uh, container. All this is is... Um, cheap dollar store glue it's this here it's white glue washable dries fast and clear stronghold non-toxic you know you get a two for a dollar at dollar tree and it's just all it is is thinned down with water to make it go on a little bit easier and it goes farther and it makes it so it's a little bit more flexible once it's dry so we have the glue and then you need a paintbrush or a sponge to apply the glue and then you need a sheet of cardstock, and I'm not entirely sure how big of a sheet you're going to need. Um, I haven't figured out the binding yet, so we'll have to come back to that part. I have a couple of ideas, but I want to check them before I try to teach you guys. I'm using this sheet here, which this is a scrap piece of paper from a couple Christmases ago that um, my sister and I were working on a project, and we tried tracing and cutting like to use it as frames and it didn't work out all that well because the texture the cardstock is textured but it's a nice heavy thick um this cardstock is from the pastel color book um cardstock paper from walmart the five dollar one so this should be plenty to do my binding i hope i think it'll be i think it'll be good if not we'll i have more scraps of this so we'll still be good and then you need double-sided tape Okay guys, I'm back. My battery died. Um, and I checked it before I started and it was full, so I'm going to have to check into that. So, But I always have a fresh one on the charger, so we're good to go. Um, I think I left off with the tape, so that's where I'm going to start back up. Um, Double-sided tape. 
I'm using the this and that double sided permanent adhesive. Um, it's by American Crafts. I've never used it before. I just opened it today and I checked it out and it seems to be relatively sticky. So we'll be using this today or tomorrow or next Thursday whenever I get to that point. Um, you need a ruler, which is pretty standard with any crafting project. I'm just using this little chintzy flimsy one from Walmart in the school supply section. Um, I did find out, however, that when you're going to cut on this with an X-Acto knife, when you're going to cut on a ruler, you should probably have one that's got a metal edge. So, just a little bit of fair warning. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I kind of shaved the crap out of my uh, ruler. But still works, so we're good to go. Uh, you need a pen or a pencil. Another given. Anything to work on a project. And a scoring tool. And where did I put mine? So, you can use just like um, a bone folder to score and then bone fold. I have the scoring pad by Martha Stewart, so that's what I'm going to be using, but it's not necessary. I just got the score pal or scoring whatever it's called. I just got it, and I haven't used it yet, so I'm going to use it for this project. But if you need to, you can just use a bone folder. Um, previously to getting my scoring tool, anytime I needed to score, I just used a set of tweezers. I just pulled them open a little bit and used the edge here to score, and it worked relatively well. So, you can pretty much score with anything that'll leave an indent, but not cut your paper. So, I'll be using the Martha Stewart tools for that. Um, okay, so on to the size range. Now, the size does not matter. If you want a small one, make a small one. You want a large one, make a large one. You want an oblong, a triangle, rectangle, circle, square, heart. It doesn't matter. Mine that I'm making is this size. Now, this is just some old packaging, like a bag to some hooks that I bought from Walmart. And um, I kept this because it's a nice, thick, sturdy um, cardboard. <clears throat> this is the size that I did. I did not measure this until before I started to do the video because I wanted to let you guys know. It's 9 inches across from here to here and 6 from top to bottom. That is the size of my pages. So I found it. Looked like a good stencil. Looked like a good size. That's what I chose. Now as far as your paper, you're going to need to cut, for my book, I'm cutting 36 sheets of this size. I need 30 pages, I'm, I'm going to do 15 pages, so I need 30 sheets of this because I'm gluing it together to make it thicker. And then you're going to need to, six pieces for the two covers, the front and back cover. I'm going to sandwich three of them so it's even a little bit thicker. So that means you need a total of 36 sheets cut out at whatever size you want. I already have mine cut. They're here. So I got those done uh, off a of frame. You guys don't need to see me cut paper. I'm pretty sure you all know how to do that. So, but I did test my theory. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm getting a cold, which I'm not pleased about. But I'll deal with it. Um, I tested the whole glue two sheets together theory before I started making this. Because I didn't want to get started and then find out it doesn't work. And then have wasted all that time and paper. So this is my test. I just took two scraps and glued them together and then cut it so it was a uh, cut clean edge. Um, it works amazingly well. I, I just used my glue and water mixture, glued it together, let it dry for a few minutes, and this is what I got. And it's crinkly and it's crunchy and I think it's beautiful. Add some distressing to the edge. It's going to work out perfectly. It's, it's really flexible. It's a lot thicker, obviously, because it's two pieces plus the glue. So it adds a lot of nice stability. And then once you get all your papers and decorations and all that on here, it's going to be even thicker. So it'll work out nice. And you can crinkle it and move it. And it can bend without the glue cracking. Because we added the water. So this is the... And you can tell, I mean, this is the one sheet. It's very flimsy. It's just paper. This, however, is nice and thick. It, it makes it to be like a cardstock thickness. And then you have all the crinkles and wrinkles and dents and divots, which I think is going to be perfect. So we have that. So I guess we'll move on to the, I'll show you how I glue them together. I use, I probably could have pulled this out before I started the video. I have these sheets here. The, all this is, is the wrapper that comes on papers. Sometimes you buy papers and they're in this plastic wrapper. That's all it is. These ones happen to be from Studio G. I have a couple of them. Um, they work fantastically to keep your um, your craft mat clean. So all you're going to do is take your two pieces of paper, or three because I grabbed three, 
You'll take your two pieces of paper. We're going to put glue on this one all the way to the edges. Don't worry if it slops around or gets on the underside or anything like that because it's it's glue. It's going to dry clear. So, and um, what I did too when I was cutting mine, if there was a little bit of piece that was rough edge or whatnot, I didn't care. I left it as is because it's a recycled book. It doesn't have to be perfect. Also, a lot of the, to make it take less time to do all the cutting, I folded the paper over like this to make, so I was cutting two sheets at one time. So I didn't bother cutting this edge here. I didn't see the point in it because I can just fold it over and still glue it and still get the same effect. And then when I bind it, I'll put this edge in the binding so you can't tell that it was, you know, one piece of paper folded over. So, but we'll glue, I'm going to show you guys one of these, glue it together, and then I'm going to stop the video and do the rest of them because you guys don't need to see me sit here and glue paper for an hour. So you just take your glue, uh, stir it up a little bit. When you mix glue and water, you're going to want to stir it like every time because it will separate. But this stuff will last forever. I've had this container and this mixture for nine, ten months in this container here. Um, the only thing I can advise you is when you close it, make sure you clean the, the uh, threads off because I didn't. And it took me a while to get it to open back up. So, But yeah, the, once you mix it, if you don't use it all, mix it in a container that can be sealed because it doesn't go bad. I mean, it's glue and water. Unless it's open, it's going gonna, it's gonna to last. So you just paint or sponge your glue on. Make sure you get all the way to the edge. Don't worry about slopping. That's what we have this protector for. If you don't have one of these protectors, an old sheet protector would work well. Um, if you have a non, one of the Tim Holtz non-stick mats, I'm pretty sure that would be you know work perfectly. I don't have one, so I don't know for sure. But it's non-stick, so I'm assuming it'd work. Um, yeah, page protector, wax paper... Anything like that. Anything that you can essentially just let it dry on and ignore it without having to have a huge mess. If you don't have anything like that available, I mean, you could still use it on your craft mat. It's not going to cause any damage. You're just going to have to make sure you wash it off before it dries. So once you get your glue on, all you do is lay the paper down. It does not have to be perfect. I, all, I, you know, I say that a hundred times. It does not have to be perfect. Crafting does not have to be perfect. That's why it's so much fun. If it doesn't line up all the way, who cares? Just glue it and let it go. And then once it's dry, if it bugs you, you can trim it off. If not, you can leave it be. I'll probably trim this one because it's got the pencil lines. But to avoid that, I could have flipped it and put it, you know, the pencil lines down. But either way, I don't mind. So you just put it on and make sure it's all the way on there. As you can see, I got some glue on it. It doesn't really matter. So just make sure your edges are sealed. If you have little puckers, just push them down. You're going to get puckers when paper gets wet at puckers. I think it looks uh, it looks cool, but some people may not. Um, you're going to want to keep a towel. I mean, you can see this one. It's dirty. Well, it's clean, but it's stained. It's got paint and glue and God only knows what else on there. Anything that makes a mess with crafting, it's on that. So this is your paper. You can just peel it off the sheet. And there you go. You just got to set it aside to dry. Um, the other one I did, it took maybe 10 minutes to dry. So, and I'm in a freezing cold room. I don't have the heat on in my room today because it was relatively nice in my area today. So I didn't turn my heat, my baseboard heats on in my craft room. So it's, it's relatively cold in here. It's probably about 60 in here. So, you know, it takes about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer to dry. So, you know, just do them up, line them up and just let them sit to dry and come back to them the next day or something like that. So here's number one. I've got a lot more to go so I'm going to shut off the camera and get these going and I will come back for the next step which will be the binding so I will see you guys then bye